Injured Rockets forward Tari Eason taunted the Dubs back on March 28th by repeatedly yelling, quote unquote, Warriors come out to play on his Instagram story. Furthermore, the rivaled Eason designed and rocked a custom tee with that same message on it in the Rockets matchup with the Dubs on Thursday night. Making Tari's mind games look silly, the Golden State Warriors came out to play Tari, handling business for a 6th straight W behind a wet 58 from the Splash Brothers and an overpowering career-high 20 points for rookie out of Indiana University, Trace Jackson Davis. A full summation of the dub's most recent dub is loading, so make sure you stay tuned. Just 13.2% of my audience is subscribed according to YouTube. If you haven't already, splash the sub box and like button for the YouTube algorithm. A Appreciate you. Eason was, according to Bleacher Report, referencing an old film called The Warriors with his custom tee, not taking shots at the dubs. But based off this reaction from the man following a bucket from Clay, this whole trying to get in the Warriors head approach from Tari didn't go his way. Since Eason's taunt on Instagram that hasn't aged well whatsoever to say the very least, the Warriors have racked up four of their last six W's throughout a win streak that's currently the longest in the association by a wide margin. The dubs would have a bit of post-game chatter with Eason, but nothing too spicy, just an aged, sourly Eason decision coming to light. Clay would give his take on Tari poking the bear post-game. Seemed like you guys heard the Warriors come out to play. Video. Yeah, that's pretty lame, especially if you're not even playing. Like, it's one thing if you're playing, you're out there competing, and you can back it up, but if you're just gonna be trolling from the sideline, like, bro, what are we doing, like? The combined seven-time All-NBA player and All-Star plus four-time champion in Thompson's 29 points on 97% true shooting in Houston, Texas, were a culprit in the most recent as of this recording Warrior victory as the pure sharpshooter got to cooking right off the bat. Houston's crowd was late for a must win. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. And while it was eventually a sellout in a season that's had the most of them of all time, likewise when Thompson sheds Brooks with a head fake plus dicey triple threat on the catch followed by a hezzy bounce simultaneous double moving jab which flows into a step back, Dylan's late to close out on this jumper. Kerr then draws up this cross screen for Clay, and it's well set by Draymond, who big bodies Jalen Green and Jabari Smith to produce an open three point field goal attempt that's drained. A Thompson on Thompson ISO would see Clay drive to his left to be met with great initial defense from his fellow Thompson, then shot create to manufacture a step back on the baseline. Amen. Looping Curry pocket pass out of a pick and roll to TJD has Green and Brooks ball watching, which in turn lets Thompson loose to receive a nifty bullet from his brother Trace and knock home a heavily contested corner triple. That's a deadly all-time sniper we have to appreciate, y'all. This is a killer leaving zero mercy for opponents that we only have so many years left of watching. Same thing goes for Chris Paul, whose pull up from 25 feet off a loon dog on ball screen was low-key a big time early response to a previous 14-6 Rockets run. Continuing to go off against his former team in Houston, CP is gonna use a perfect big body screen from Draymond on Cam Whitmore to gain leverage for another off the dribble triple. The reliability of having a fourth future Hall of Famer in the fold unveils once more when the NBA's third all-time assist leader utilizes a double drag to find an angle to the paint where he gets to the float game. Exhibiting Curry's lack of a whistle was this semi-transition where he gets past Van Vliet, who gets away with leaning all over Steph. He fights through the contact, but come on now, that's an and one. Draymond's going to out-hustle Smith Jr. on the backboards to snatch this offensive rebound before midair kicking it back out to Curry at half. Steph gets a high GP2 ball screen and gets downhill for a bunny. That forces an Ime Udoka timeout. We've seen a flurry of Jackson Davis's power in terms of TJD's athleticism, but what's gone overlooked is the train robbery's soft touch, presenting itself when Trace fends off the late rotation of Brooks by hookshotting it for a banker plus one. Jalen Green was mostly held under control, but did chain together this shifty tween and step back for a nice shot over Jackson Davis. It was a great team effort to force Green into kickouts all game. 
holding Jalen to just 14, but with the extra space, credit 2022's third overall pick in the product of Auburn University, Jabari Smith Jr. for stepping up for 24 on the night for Houston. Better, smarter shot selection from Clay was displayed on this possession when earlier in the season, you probably would have seen him selfishly force this pull up and brick it. Instead, he entries to green in the post and relocates to the perimeter for the catch and shoot. Masterful after timeout from Kerr in a six point game to respond with a chess move to Udoka's switching features Curry back screening for Green to get Jabari Smith Jr. on him before receiving a dribble handoff from Jackson Davis that gets Dylan Brooks onto him, whose contest isn't good enough and it's an executed play call, could have easily been a four point play. A Wiggins brick forced by a great contest from a veteran who didn't receive nearly enough respect for his contributions to the 2023 championship Denver Nuggets, Jeff Green, is made up for by Trey snatching this ridiculous O board with go-go gadget arms around Jabari Smith Jr. and he finishes his scraps. After Wiggins closed out well on the other end, Andrew would be the beneficiary of Clay collapsing the pressure of Van Vliet when Thompson mid-airs it to him and it's an easy pivot around Green. Mostly the officiating was good in this one, but when GP2 casually shows off his bunnies like he seems to on a nightly basis with this high velocity tip dunk to cap off the first half, you can clearly see in broad daylight Gary getting racked by Smith Jr. But there's no and one. Miss call. Simming 15 minutes ahead to the second half, and it was the brother of an MLB slugger. Trace. it high, hits it hard, deep to left center, Thompson's left the yard again. Talk about his journey, no way, no way, Trace Thompson, stop it! In Clay Thompson, continuing to light it up like his bro in the show, finding the man with the same name as the major leaguer and rookie brother Trace, who he relocates to off the inbound to receive a handoff before draining this insane deep range balm in his fellow Thompson's face, amen. Early offense flare from Trace sees his brother line up a catch and shoot under duress of Van Vliet closing out. In terms of TJD's career night, here with Draymond dishing as the one, this time a five out off ball screening action where Trace slips the flare screen on Jalen Green, nets him a wide open paint to work with, where his brother Clay spots him with a perfectly arced pass that seems through Jalen Green. Trace receives it, and given his massive size advantage over the only rotating man in Jalen Green, Jackson. Davis is well aware that merely taking his time will get Green jumping, that comes to fruition, and it's a hoop. Sweet ball movement commences when Curry penetrates to get four Rocket defenders eyes on him. He then mid-air wrap around swings to Wiggs in the corner who on the catch sweeps through and drives into a jab which draws fellow Canadian Dylan Brooks over. So yet another facilitator for this Warriors team and Andrew has the underrated vision to swiftly locate Davis open in the paint. Great dime from Andrew. Stephen Curry would then finally get a whistle, which as we talked about in my last video, he never gets, and he wasn't getting the benefit of the doubt this game either. Still, the unmatched aura from Curry would in turn display itself, as Wardell would hit us with a fittingly sarcastic selly after finally getting a whistle. I mean, it's about damn time, man. For Steph, while Curry's known worldwide for generational shooting, this naturally makes off the dribble speed, the ability to attack angles and finish through traffic, overlooked contributors to Stefan's game, therefore making it easy for your boy to declare to the basketball universe that Curry's an underrated slasher. Gary Payton II would mimic his Hall of Fame pops with some all-NBA clamps, straight up snatching this away from Jabari Smith Jr., pushing it ahead to himself in transition and acrobatting around Jalen Green. Before this split action, when Houston was at the line, Kerr was telling Moody on the sidelines to just rise up and shoot it, and directly after receiving that sideline advice from Steve, as well as a handoff and slip screen from TJD, Moses would do just that, and it fell through for him. After a skip pass from CP to the short corner locating Clay, TJD's favorite spot be in the pocket, sees him get loose to gather a nice Thompson dish before flushing it over three rocket defenders. Go to work, Trace. TJD would then get buckets on a man drafted 53 picks ahead of him in last year's draft right here. Then sit back and admire this beautiful lob from CP to spot him in the dunkers for a monstrosity. Lob! 
Trace Jackson Davis. Trace would break this layup, but take in this springy elevation, incredible catch, and all around elite hand eye coordination from Moses Moody to rise up and execute this two handed putback. And Moody, clean it up. Rockets just leave Dre open right here, and Green does a great job of pass faking to get even more space before penetrating. This fake ram screen, which turns out to be a normal pin down from GP, when Green gives it up to Curry before Steph arrives for what seemed to be an on ball screen, runways Draymond into a beastly take to the cup. Kerr went from developing 21-year-old Moses Moody to developing 23-year-old Lester Quinones by subbing in LQ for the final few minutes, in addition to fellow bench vibe enhancer Jerome Robinson. Lester drew up a heist to score 9 straight, albeit in garbage time. Who knows, that bit of playing time for Lester could come in handy for dire circumstances. It was a classy Golden State win when it was all said and done as the dubs handled their business with no mercy like they're supposed to and capable of. The defense was strictly anchored by Draymond yet again. As the former DPOY's aura is special right now, let's pray Green's able to keep this up because the man's amazing to watch defend and as troubled as he is, the enforcer will inevitably be loved by those on his side and hated by those who aren't. Combining Dre's defensive impact with what Curry and Thompson did offensively, and this still incredibly effective and fun to watch greatest big three in the history of basketball are through their production ingraining a do or die approach into their roster as a whole to every possession of every game on either end. This back against the wall mentality I've been preaching over my last few videos is going to put Golden State ahead of the competition in terms of being fully prepped mentally, physically, and strategically for when the season is legitimately on the line. This group can do something special, but it's all about habits. The 8 game over 500 dubs now sit just 2 games back of the 8th seeded Sacramento Kings. How far will the Warriors win streak go in your opinion though? Let me know down below in the comment section for a chance at next video's commenter shout out. Top 5 commenters with the most shout outs by June 21st earn free merch. Today's shout out goes to Omar Hassan who says, I believe Steph doesn't get calls because sometimes the refs literally don't see the action. They're so mesmerized by his play and the shots he's both taken and making that they're often caught ball watching instead of actually officiating. Sometimes we can forget the refs are people too and they can become fans for a moment, and often those moments are when Steph is getting obliterated by a 7 foot behemoth. That was the best take written by far in last video's comments section, so appreciate you Omar. Every take is encouraged though and appreciated, so thank you your boy Dflo signing off and I'll see you next video.